Hello friends. I hope you are all doing well and having a wonderful holiday season so far. As we get closer to Christmas, holiday gifting can feel really overwhelming. In the past, I've put a lot of pressure on myself to find the perfect gift for all of my friends and family, and especially on years when money is tight, it has just created so much unnecessary anxiety around gift giving. So this year, I'm doing things a bit differently, and I wanted to take you along with me. This Christmas, instead of worrying about buying enough or stressing over finding the perfect gifts in stores, I really want to focus on putting love and good energy into the process of giving meaningful gifts. And one big way I'm doing that this year is by making homemade gifts for friends and family. There is something so special about handmade gifts and the effort and intention that goes into making them. And I think they're a wonderful way to show someone you care about them because you've taken the time to make something unique just for them. Today I'm making some homemade peppermint bark. I followed a recipe by Preppy Kitchen and it was super simple to make. First I'm melting dark chocolate in a double boiler and then spreading it onto a lined tray in an even layer. Then I'm chopping and melting some white chocolate. And just be a little careful with the white chocolate because it can burn really easily. I actually burned it the first time around and had to redo it, so just make sure you take it off the heat before it's completely melted. And after mixing in a few drops of peppermint extract, I poured the white chocolate on top of the dark in an even layer and sprinkled it with crushed candy canes. I was able to buy a bag of crushed candy cane pieces at the store, but you can also crush whole candy canes to make the topping. I love how festive and Christmassy peppermint bark looks, and it tastes absolutely delicious. Once the bark is completely cool, I'm breaking it into smaller pieces and packaging it in a parchment lined tin. Next, I'm making holiday simmer pot jars, and I will link the recipe from my blog below. These are such a fun homemade gift for friends and family because all they need to do is dump the jar into a pot on the stove, add a few inches of water, and bring everything up to a simmer, and it will make their homes smell just like Christmas. So to make these, I'm adding a mix of holiday spices and aromatic ingredients into a jar. 
I love using dried oranges, cinnamon sticks, and whole cloves, and I'm also adding some fresh pine sprigs and fresh cranberries, and I'm just going to tell everyone to use these within the next couple of weeks, but if you'd like them to last a bit longer, you can use dried pine and dried cranberries. I like to make little handwritten labels for these with instructions on how to use them. And then to make the jars even cuter, I'm wrapping the top with craft paper and then using jute twine to attach the labels with a dried orange slice, a cinnamon stick, and a sprig of evergreen. Next, I'm making evergreen winter bath salts, and I am so proud of this recipe. I'll link it for you below. It smells like taking a walk through a snowy forest. The scent is so soothing and invigorating. So to make this recipe, I'm adding some Epsom salts to a large bowl. The recipe on my blog makes one cup, but I'm tripling it so I can make a few batches. And to the Epsom salts, I'm adding some baking soda, which will help make the bath water feel kind of silkier and smoother when these are dissolved. I'm mixing everything together and I'm adding a few sprigs of dried pine and dried rosemary. Then I'm adding a few drops of pine and rosemary essential oils. You can use either or a combination of the two. Once the bath salts are mixed together, I'm scooping them into some mason jars. Then I'm using red and white twine to attach some handwritten labels and a little sprig of evergreen. so much fun making the homemade holiday gifts last night and I think they turned out so well. I'm so happy with how these evergreen bath salts turned out, especially with the label and the little jar. I just think they look so cute and I mentioned this before but these are such a big favorite among my friends and family. I make this every year and I like to give it away in little jars so I'm especially excited to give this out this year. So I'm about to head into town and go shopping for Alex and my sister and a couple of my friends and my Christmas gift budget is lower than usual this year because Alex and I have decided to save money for a house and have a lower spend Christmas and we're really happy to be saving money but to be honest when we decided to do this at first I was feeling kind of sad and anxious and I think I had this fear that spending less on Christmas would make it feel less special or less meaningful and I think that's because we receive so much messaging around holiday gifting 
especially in the US, and there's this pressure to find the perfect holiday gift for your loved one or um, to show people that you care about them by getting them a really nice gift. And while I love giving gifts and I love receiving thoughtful, meaningful gifts, and it means so much to me, um, it's just one of the ways we can show other people we love them and care about them. And our ability to give gifts is not a reflection of how good of a friend we are or how good of a family member we are. There are just so many different ways that we show up for other people in our lives and we make them feel loved and cared for. So that's something that I have been reminding myself, especially around this time of year. And that has really helped me shift my perspective around my lower spend Christmas this year. And now I'm feeling really excited about it. So I've made my homemade gifts and later on today, I'm going to show you how I add extra love and intention into wrapping gifts and share a few other ideas on how I'm planning to make this Christmas extra festive and special even on a lower budget. So with all that being said, I'm gonna go get ready and put on my coat and let's go shopping. It was a very successful shopping day and I had so much fun walking around at Terrain. I didn't get anything but I loved seeing all of the home decor and the gifts. It's just so inspiring being in there and seeing everything on display. But I did buy a lot of books from the bookstore. So these are all books for Alex. So I'm not going to show you what I got because they're his Christmas gifts and when he watches this it's going to spoil his surprise for him. So I won't reveal what I got for him but I wanted to talk to you about a really fun tradition that Alex and I are going to do for Christmas this 
year. So I mentioned earlier that we're trying to save some money this Christmas and we were trying to brainstorm some ideas for low budget gifts that we could give each other. And I was on Instagram last month and I was scrolling and I found a reel that talked about an Icelandic tradition called Jola Boca Flood. I'm probably completely mispronouncing it, but it is um, translated to English as the Christmas Book Flood. And it's this tradition in Iceland where on Christmas Eve, friends and family will gift each other books and then they spend the rest of the day reading and drinking hot chocolate. And it just sounds like such a fun and cozy thing. So Alex and I are going to have our own Christmas Book Flood this year instead of doing regular gifts. And we're so excited about it because we both love books so much, so it doesn't really feel like we're missing out on anything for Christmas this year by not doing regular gifts. We're just going to read a bunch of books and have some really nice quality time together reading, so I think it's going to be so nice. So I'm going to wrap some presents, but first I'm going to make these hand-painted folk art gift tags that I found in my folk art book, and I've been wanting to make these for months now, so I'm so excited to make them. One of the ways I like to add a handmade touch to gifts is to wrap them in a really beautiful way and I love using recycled craft paper as a gift wrap. It's usually much cheaper than buying regular wrapping paper and there's so much more paper in the roll so it lasts way longer and it creates a really nice canvas for adding natural decorations. I'm using jute twine and red and white baker's twine to attach the labels and sprigs of evergreen, eucalyptus, winterberry, and dried baby's breath flowers. These extra decorations are so simple, but they make the gifts look so pretty, and I love that I can bring my friends and family a little extra joy with creative gift wrapping.
The gifts are all wrapped and it feels so good to have everything done and ready to give to my loved ones. I'm waiting for a couple extra gifts in the mail that will be here next week. But other than that, I'm all done with all of my holiday shopping and gift making. So it feels so good to finally be done with everything. Whenever I'm cooking for someone or making a craft or gift for a loved one, I try to infuse it with love and good energy. And I imagine um, that when I touch the item that my hands are letting this positive loving energy flow into the gift and I know that sounds silly but if you've ever had like a soup that your friend has made for you when you're sick or a sweater that your grandmother knit for you I feel like you can feel the love and intention that went into making those things and I really believe that we can pass that along to others so whenever I'm making something for someone else I always try to do that as I was wrapping, I was thinking about what I said earlier about how physical gift giving is just one of the ways that we can show people that we love them. And it made me think about the five love languages. And if you're not familiar, there are five different languages or ways that we can show our loved ones that we care about them and receive love from others. And the love languages are acts of service, quality time, physical touch, words of affirmation, and gift giving. And it made me realize that there are so many different ways to give to others that don't involve physical gifts. So for example, for acts of service, I've seen people make these little handmade coupon books where you can write in um, different acts of service. So for example, emptying the dishwasher, watching the kids for an evening, or cleaning the kitchen, whatever it may be. And they'll make these little booklets and share them with their partner or a friend or whoever it may be and then that person can redeem their coupon whenever they need some extra support and for words of affirmation I think writing a really thoughtful message in a Christmas card or holiday card telling someone how much you care about them is such a great way to show your love for them and for quality time and physical touch I think spending a night in maybe cooking a nice dinner together and snuggling up on the couch watching a movie is such a wonderful way to spend the holidays instead of giving physical gifts. So there are so many different ways we can give to others this holiday season and I'm definitely going to try to incorporate more of the non-physical gifts into giving this time of year and hopefully carry that forward into future years. So thank you all so much for being here and watching and sharing your time with me. I'm sending you the biggest hug and I will see you next time. Good night friends.